see, and we're starting. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gayatri Titus, and I'm from the Counseling Center, and I'm joined uh, uh, by my colleague, Jenna, uh, and we are going to be presenting on mindfulness, meditation, and more, how to find peace in the middle of chaos, uh, and I'll let Jenna introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Tomalski and I am also a counselor at the Counseling Center. So before we get started, uh, just a little disclaimer here in form consent. This and all other virtual workshops through the App State Counseling Center are intended to be psychoeducational in nature and not designed to provide mental health treatment or any emergency response. If you are seeking mental health treatment, we do encourage you to go visit our website or call us um, at 828-262-3180 to learn more about our services that we're currently offering. If you are experiencing a mental health emergency such as uh, suicidal thoughts, please visit our website, call 911 um, or local emergency responders um, for emergency services. And again, resources may differ based on your location. So today, what we're going to talk about, uh, Gayatri and I are going to discuss stress and the impacts that it has on individuals. Um, we're going to talk uh, not just about stress, but then how to manage that stress and explore how creating a self-care routine, how self-care can mitigate stress, describing the various areas of wellness that stress can impact and how self-care um, can help with those areas. And then importantly, we're gonna talk about and practice five different self-care techniques. Um, so going through, we're gonna talk, we're gonna practice breathing, uh, practice gratitude, scheduling self-care, because that is super important. Um, and then Gayatri will talk us through, um, or tell us about a tea meditation and a chocolate med meditation. So if you'd like to kind of play along with us, um, pause the video here, go grab a cup of tea or go grab some chocolate. So when we get to those sections, uh, you can practice it along with us. Thank you, Jenna. Um, so um, I'm going to share a little bit about, about stress. So Jenna, have you heard of the word stress before? A couple times, Gayatri. Yeah, <laughs> it brings up all sorts of memories for me when I was a student. And uh, I just remember uh, being very grateful for pizza. I don't know about <laughs> you. I always appreciate pizza. Yes, absolutely. It was, it was my go-to meal almost every day. And, and uh, you know, it's something that resonates with us uh, because we've been there. Even in, you know, my daily life, stress is something that um, is part of it. So, you know, which brings us to the question, can we ever get rid of stress? Um, I don't think so. And if anybody does find out how, then please let us know. Um, so this is really more about how can we sort of not get rid of stress, but understand stress in a different way and learn to balance it uh, differently. Um, we also want to sort of talk a little bit about, you know, where stress comes from. And also the fact that stress is not experienced, the events are not experienced in the same way uh, by all of us. So for example, if I'm going through something stressful and Jenna, if you're going through something stressful, we, we might cope with it in different ways um, and that is okay. Um, so any thoughts on that, Jenna? I think those are all really great points. And I think especially when we think about this COVID pandemic, um, we're all experiencing kind of the same pandemic, but in different ways, it's hitting every person differently. And so that stress experience is gonna be different. Um, so that was, that's a really good point, Gayatri. Yeah, thank you. And I'm glad you brought up the COVID-19 uh, because that's not something that we are seeing a clear resolution to. It's like we learn, we're learning how to manage our stress differently and it's not something that's, that's gonna go away uh, right now as we, see, or we hope it will. So where does stress come from? Uh, as you can see, on your screen, we have a whole list of things, and this is just probably the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we could be stressed about things that are going on uh, on a personal level, um, on a financial level, 
uh, even with academics, this is a different time with COVID-19 and a lot of us have had to make changes uh, with, uh, in terms of being online. Uh, we've had to find private spaces to work uh, where we can work our technology. Uh, I've sometimes had bad Wi-Fi, Jenna. What about you? Have you experienced any of that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Finding that balance of that work life, also being in the space where your regular life happens and, and managing and making sure you're taking time for yourself. Um, and I also think it's important to, you know, point out on some of these things like travel and relationships and family. We often think of stress as always bad, um, but sometimes stress can be a good thing. Stress is essentially just change. Um, and so changes with travel or changes with family. Um, and so recognizing what parts of these um, feel kind of like that harmful stress, um, but also recognizing that good stress uh, can also still be a little challenging. Yeah, that's, that's such a great point. I went uh, to the Greenway Trail the other day and walked by the river and it just felt so much better. And I didn't even realize, Jenna, how much stress I was carrying until I sort of was able to let some of that go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just recognizing it is, is really helpful. Right. And so as you can see, the person has many, many balls in the air. And sometimes life feels that way, especially when we have this pandemic, that there's so much to do, so much to balance. Uh, and again, Jenna and me want to sort of share a few things that you could do, that we all could do to manage our stress a little uh, more effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so part of that, kind of what Gayatri is alluding to is recognizing what that relationship we have with stress is of just one, like recognizing that it's there um, and then recognizing what those signals are for us of knowing how, what, how we're carrying that stress. Um, and there's a lot of different ways we can notice that stress of physical symptoms, like maybe your chest is tight, maybe kind of there's a headache, um, emotional signs of stress, feeling more overwhelmed, um, feeling really tired or fatigued, and then behavioral signs of stress. I don't know about you, Gayatri, but sometimes when I get really stressed, I get really irritable, irritable and kind of snappy at others, at other people. Has that ever yeah. happened to you? Uh, so I know that my daughter gets hangry, mm, yeah. and I, I have started noticing that with me as well, that I get hangry if I'm not eating uh, you know, when I'm supposed to, or I get irritable. So yes, I've noticed that. Yeah. And so recognizing for each individual what that, um, what those signs of stress look like, and then what, how we're defining that relationship we have with stress. Again, a lot of times when we hear the word stress, we think of it as immediately negative or bad, or I shouldn't have stress. Um, when again, that stress can kind of be telling us something. If we're noticing kind of our chest is feeling tired or we're feeling really fatigued or irritable, that can be a good sign for us of, hey, what's going on? Um, what is this? Where is this stress coming from? What am I feeling? Um, and we can turn that perception of the stress is bad into, oh, this stress is telling me something. What is it that I need right now? And so those, that perception and expectation that we have of ourselves and others can greatly influence our stress levels, um, especially in this time of, um, of the pandemic where, um, I don't know about you guys, I've seen you know, on social media where it's, you know, oh, we're in this pandemic, I should bake bread every day, or I should you know, write a book, or I need to be so productive. And oh man, that's really exhausting. Totally, uh, Jenna. And you know, I have friends all over the world. And when we, you know, went into this pandemic, I would see so many pictures of all these exotic dishes. And I was like, man, I'm just barely able to make rice and chicken curry. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that too was a lot of work. Yeah. And so recognizing that we're kind of in this really stressful time, we're not quite sure when it's going to end. And so in general, our baseline stress is likely going to be higher than it normally is. And so if we're kind of at a higher baseline of stress or baseline of anxiety, smaller things are going to feel more overwhelming or smaller things, quote unquote, smaller things can make us more irritable or make us more attuned to that stress. And so just recognizing that, hey, we're, we're in a stressful time and 
we can cope with it maybe more effectively. It's not that we're doing anything wrong or that it's bad. It's just recognizing this context that we're in right now. And so recognizing, you know, how you might have managed stress prior to the pandemic might be a little different and might need some tweaking based on all of these different life events that have happened over the past few months. Um, and so any, any thoughts on that, Gayatri? Um, kind of, I've noticed my baseline's stress is a little bit higher in general. Yeah, I so appreciate you saying that, Jen. I just, I love that idea of us sort of checking in with ourselves and seeing what our baseline is uh, instead of judging ourselves and saying maybe, oh gosh, I'm so stressed or whatever, but understanding that sometimes, you know, we might be more sensitive to certain things or we might care more deeply about certain issues or events. And I think that's a great idea to sort of tune into yourself to see what your baseline is. And, and that baseline can change, right, Jenna? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so one way that we can start to work to kind of change that baseline is with the magic of self-care. And that can be a buzzword that we hear nowadays, but essentially we can't pour from an empty cup. We can't really give to others until we take care of ourselves first. So let's dive in a little bit more into self-care. So self-care is about taking charge of the present and taking time to nurture body, mind, and soul in your present circumstance. So again, recognizing the contextual factor that we're in of this pandemic, um, academics, or if you're in a job, but being a in order to face the challenges, the everyday challenges of life that come with being a human, it is really important to take care of ourselves uh, for, for our own overall well-being. And I can imagine that some people, you might be thinking, well, if I take care of myself, then that's selfish. And oh man, self-care is absolutely not selfish. Again, we can't, it's so much harder to give to others or to bring our full self into our work, into our academics, into our relationships if we're not taking care of ourselves first and recognizing what it is that we need. And so uh, Gayatri, I know you're, you're a big proponent of self-care, so um, I'm curious what you have to add to that or what's, what you think. Yeah, so I, uh, you know, Jenna, I, when I uh, you know, first came to this country, something that I noticed was the question that people often ask is how are you doing? And you know, we live in a doing society, we're always doing and meaning in our lives is acquired from doing, um, but we're human beings as well. And when you were talking about self-care, what speaks to me is about how can we allow ourselves to be? And in that space is where self-care happens, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so well yeah, said. so that's, yeah, thank you. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. And uh, you know, we're always like we're eating and we're watching TV or we're used to multitasking uh, several different things at one time to feel useful. And I think in this presentation, Jenna, I'm, I want to invite you sort of to see if we could do things a little bit differently uh, to be able to practice this self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then again, just recognizing uh, the self-care strategies that were really helpful maybe a couple months ago might need to be tweaked or just uh, adding more tools to your tool belt of self-care or changing that perception of what self-care can be. And mm -hmm. so, again, we hope that this presentation can help start that, that process. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we think of self-care, it's not kind of a one and done or an a one size fits all. And so if we think of um, kind of these different dimensions of wellness and we think of what we need for self-care, it can be really helpful to look at these different dimensions and see what feels like it's what feels like I'm being depleted in. Um, so different dimensions like emotional, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual. And I can imagine um, with this pandemic and all these requirements for physical distancing, that, that social dimension of wellness might feel like it's really depleted. 
So that sense of connection, belonging, support system might feel not as strong as it used to. And so one thing could be how, given the constraints that we have, how can we provide self-care in this social sense? Um, and maybe it's doing more um, like physical distance uh, visits or um, like Zoom happy hours or Zoom uh, game nights, but kind of getting creative and really understanding what feels, what areas are feeling depleted um, and what areas do I feel really strong in? So maybe social is not so high, but I'm feeling really fulfilled intellectually because I've been able to listen to podcasts and I've been able to read more books or watch documentaries. And so recognizing where the, the challenges are, but also where the strengths are. Right. And, uh, you know, as I'm looking at this list, um, I'm wondering which are some dimensions of wellness that I think I need to work on a little bit. Um, and I was wondering, Jenna, is that, you know, what about you? Are you, are there any dimensions that come across as things that you think you might need work on? Mm, I think similar to I imagine what others are feeling, I think that social dimension of wellness, um, especially now where it's been a couple months and haven't been able to go visit uh, friends that don't live in the city um, or live in a, in a close proximity, um, that feels like it's, it's needing a little bit more, more attention and care. How about you? Yes, I'm, I'm the same way, though, in an interesting way, I've connected on Zoom with people, with friends around the world. So uh, it's, it's weird. It's kind of like something that's been helpful, but I also miss that personal connection. Um, and I've taken some walks with people staying six feet apart and wearing my mask. Uh, and I think the environmental dimension is doing pretty well in my life right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely being in Boone is a is really nice for that environmental dimension to be around nature and have such great scenery we can walk around in. Yeah. And you know, I appreciate Jenna that I think th this is something I think maybe we could just maybe do like a weekly or a bi-weekly check and see how we're doing in these dimensions and see what we need to sort of tweak or what we need to sort of how which areas of our life do we have to fill that cup that you were talking about? Yeah, I think that's a great idea to help with that, that awareness of what feels like it's working and what feels like it's maybe not working as much um, in, the, in the present moment. What needs more attention at this point? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about five activities. The first activity that can help us practice uh, self-care is focusing on our breath. And we have a link to a video here that you could play at your convenience and you could look it up on YouTube as well. It is uh, by Jay Shetty and it's called The First Thing I Learned as a Monk. And I love this video because it gave me some insights into how important breathing is. And for those who haven't heard of Jay Shetty, he um, decided to be a monk and uh, went through his own journey, his own experiences, and then sort of came back uh, and wanted to share his insights with everyone. Uh, so Jenna, you've seen the video too. What, what about the video strikes you as important or what resonates with you? Yeah, I think one of the things that really sticks with me is how how present we can be with our breath. We recognize that um, our breath changes when we're angry, when we're sad, when we're happy. And so when we can gain more understanding and more awareness of our breath, we can actually use our breath to help, help manage those emotions or help center ourselves from maybe some unhelpful thoughts. Um, and just how we always have our breath as something that we can fall back on, um, regardless of what's going on in our environment. Um, and I thought that that's a really powerful piece that stuck out to me. Right. So, so kind of like we live in a world of chaos where we, we don't have control over so many things, but there is something that we can sort of have some control over is how we breathe and how we can use our breathing to calm our, uh, cells down and 
calm my emotions a little bit, to just get a little more handle of things. So, um, so Jenna and I thought we could do a breathing exercise. Is that okay, Jenna, if we sort of walk people through that today? Go for it. Okay. So this is called the 448 breathing technique. And uh, what we want you to do is just sort of be comfortable, find a comfortable spot. And you can stand, you can sit, um, it's fine. And some people close their eyes, some people want to keep it open and just whatever uh, you know fits for you. And the way we're going to do it is, well, so I'm first gonna tell you how it works and then we're gonna do it. Then I and me are gonna model it um, and you'll have free to join in. So 448 means that you breathe in for a count of four. The middle four means that you hold your breath for a count of four. And then eight means that you breathe out for a count of eight. And you don't have to reach up to eight. You could do six, you could do seven, whatever works for you. Uh, and when you breathe out, uh, we want to uh, sort of invite you to try to breathe out like a loud whooshing sound, like you're letting go of some of the stress or the anxiety or something that you've been carrying for, uh, for a while. So you ready, Jenna? I'm ready. Count us okay. in. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start counting. So find that comfortable spot you're in. Maybe loosen your shoulders uh, if you feel like they're tight. Um, and so you breathe in. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, should we do that one more time, Jenna? Let's do it one more time. Okay, so breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, Jenna, how are you feeling? Hmm. More centered. Okay. It was hard for me to count and breathe at the same yeah. time. Yeah, but I, I will, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think um, just a, a point that kind of sticks out to me with, with breathing is it's not, the intention is not to get rid of your stress or get rid of anxiety. Um, but to allow you to respond to thoughts, emotions, situations, as opposed to react. So it kind of gives us the space to take a step back from, from that stress and then respond in a way that maybe we do another breath or maybe we implement another self-care strategy. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not meant to get rid of stress. Right. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that takes a little bit more, and it's about managing our relationship with stress, like we talked earlier. So I'm glad you sort of mentioned that. So we hope that everyone who watches this will take a few moments uh, to check out this video, and um, sort of uh, we hope that this will be something that uh, you find useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one uh, one activity that can be really helpful. Another self-care activity is practicing gratitude. Um, and so kind of this quote here really gets out what gratitude, gratitude is of unlocking the fullness of life, um, can turn denial into acceptance, chaos into order, makes sense of our past, brings peace for today and vision for tomorrow. And so gratitude, essentially being thankful for whatever it is that feels important in the moment. Again, this isn't this isn't discounting the stress that we are have that we are feeling or discounting kind of the the challenging things that are going on in our life, but also providing space for what we are grateful for, what we can be thankful for in the moment. We can hold both of those those feelings at the same time of recognizing, man, there's a lot of challenges going on right now, and here are the things that I feel very strong in. And so this can be as, you know, as quote unquote small as I'm really, I really appreciate this, um, 
this cup of coffee in the morning, or I really appreciate being able to, to pet my dog, um, to, to maybe what feels like bigger things of I'm really grateful for my health or my family or living in Boone so I can be around nature. Um, but really thinking for, for you, what, what builds that gratitude? And so for an activity, we really encourage you to write down five things that you're grateful for or thankful for um, and having that list. So when things do feel really challenging or when things feel really stressful, being able to maybe take a breath, take that step back and then look at this list of things that you appreciate, things that you're thankful for to help balance that, ooh, this is really challenging right now. And here are some things that I'm really grateful for. Um, I'm curious kind of what, what might be some things on your list, Gayatri? So um, I'm trying to think today what I'm grateful for. And today, um, my daughter, she made me uh, some eggs and toast. And I'm so grateful for that. I didn't have to even get up. She made it and she gave it to me and she put extra butter. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Can she bring me some? Sure. She, <laughs> she would love to. She would love to. And maybe we can sing our breakfast burrito. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, so yeah. Cool. And then, secondly, Jenna, I wanted to tell you that I'm also very grateful that I'm doing this presentation with you and you're sort of doing it with me. So, I really appreciate that, you know, that we are sharing this together. Yeah, I, oh, thank you for that. I appreciate that as well. Um, and being willing to kind of share what that, that gratefulness is. Um, yeah, and the fact that we're, we're able to record this and able to kind of have this opportunity to provide, uh, provide some of these strategies um, is really, is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. And when, you know, that internet turned kind of a bit unstable at the beginning. I was like, oh my gosh, and I'm grateful that this is so far knock on wood. Uh, we will keep going till we're done. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing, Jenna, I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, share is that, you know, something that people could do is even write down on little pieces of paper what they're grateful for and put it in a Ziploc bag and then maybe open that up at the end of a week or two weeks and look at what their life has been like in the last few weeks and what they're grateful or thankful for. Yeah, that, that's a great idea, kind of in the moment gratitude. Um, and then kind of seeing the, the compilation of gratitude over the week. Right. Yeah, what a great idea. So that's, <laughs> yeah, so that's a, another um, self-care strategy. Often when we can recognize what we're grateful for, that kind of, um, can help put things into perspective too, maybe. Um, and so another um, uh, strategy for self-care, uh, I don't know about you, Gayatri, I'm a little bit of a planner. And so one way that we can ensure that we're having, are creating time for self-care is creating a self-care plan. So this does take a little bit of um, proactive, um, proactive action and uh, creating a 30-day self-care plan for and have something each day that we do for ourselves that is self-care. And again, here's a just a little uh, example of one. And so you'll see things as simple as look at yourself in the mirror and smile. Um, that takes maybe 10 seconds to something that's maybe a little bit uh, a little bit more difficult or a little bit more uh, more extensive, like putting technology devices away for one meal or planning a vacation. But this shows it can be something that feels really small or something that uh, is, it takes a little bit more time. But having something planned each day um, so that we create accountability for ourselves, we create intentionality for self-care. Uh, and then we also have a list of 30 things, 30 other things that we can do for self-care to kind of have in our back pocket. Right. Um, and I think this could be a fun game, too, if, you know, people put it on the, like, a refrigerator door. You know, people could take turns and play sort of like a tic-tac-toe or just, just make it fun for the whole family. 
even uh, and sort of see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Is there one that you particularly like or that you would be willing to choose to do today, Jenna, from that list? Ooh, I think uh, play your favorite song or play or play a, a dancing song. So I think for me, it would be uh, Lizzo, one of Lizzo's songs, because she is so energetic and it just always makes me want to dance. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, which one should I, I want to look up that? Which, which is your favorite? Oh, I think the, the song Good As Hell. Okay. All <laughs> right. I'm going to play yeah. that today. <laughs> okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, the next activity that we want to share with you is tea meditation. So for those of you that have poured yourself a cup of tea or coffee, or you could even do it with hot chocolate. Uh, but the whole idea is to go back to what can we do to fill our cup? And like we talked earlier, we're always, you know, we're running, we're doing, uh, you know, we eat, we drink, and it's sort of like in a mindless way uh, because we're trying to multitask uh, more often than not. And so tea meditation is something that can help uh, ground ourselves a little bit more. And um, a, the Buddhist uh, monk, uh, who's, who is a Vietnamese monk, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, does a lot of work on tea meditation and mindfulness. And so what he often says is that, you know, take that cup of tea and instead of just gulping it down, you know, take, take a few moments to feel your hands round that cup of tea and kind of feel the warmth um, of that and how that feels on your hands. And then maybe take, 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 Taking the aroma, you know, of the tea notes of the hot chocolate, uh, uh, and sort of be present with that cup of tea, um, and even looking at that tea. When you look at that tea, it's made, uh, you know, from the base of water, and that water came from the rain, and the rain came from a cloud, and so you are essentially looking at at a cloud. It's it's transformed into rain and it has made its way in your teacup. And so using that as an opportunity to maybe be more thankful of, uh, you know, the universe, rain, nature. Um, and if you're having hot chocolate, maybe giving a moment of thanks to uh, the people responsible for the cocoa beans and how that made their way in, into your cup. Um, and so, you know, as you do that, the kind of slow it down and take a couple of sips, uh, you know, as, as you like, and sort of be present in that moment just with you and the tea or the coffee or the hot chocolate that you're drinking, um, and continue to do that till you finish drinking whatever's in that cup, um, and sort of sit for a few minutes with that experience of how that makes you feel when you slow it down for you. You uh, sort of take a little moment in time, a few moments in time to slow things down. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what tea meditation is, but you have to experience it to know what it's like. So we hope that you will try that. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, Jenna? Yeah. I I think we come back to the idea of slowing down. We're in a society, I feel like that is very go, go, go. And we always have to think of one thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. And by breathing, by doing this tea meditation, and then also the chocolate meditation that Guy will go over in just a second, allowing ourselves time to slow down, even if it's just for, you know, a 30 second breath or having some tea for five minutes but really allowing ourselves to slow down, refocus our thoughts onto the present of really experiencing the breath or the tea um, can be so, so replenishing and so revitalizing. Um, and so similarly with the chocolate um, that you'll go over, I think it's a, a, a similar premise. 
Yeah, it's a similar premise. So, um, so Jenna, can I just sort of role play with you for a minute about the chocolate meditation? Absolutely. Okay. So Jenna, I want you to pick up that piece of chocolate, but I don't want you to open it. Okay. Mm, okay. I want you to I want you to look at that wrapper, and I want you to notice what that wrapper looks like. Uh, you know whether there's silver on it or gold or what sort of color it is. And then I want you to go ahead and I want you to unwrap the chocolate, but don't eat it yet. So just unwrap it. And I want you to look at that chocolate and notice what shape the chocolate is in. And what color is the chocolate? Is it white? Is it, um, you know, a light brown color, a dark brown color? Does it have, um, you know, motive on it? Or what, what is on that chocolate? And then I want you to hold that piece of chocolate and I want you to notice what it's like to hold that piece of chocolate. And now take that chocolate, Jenna, and take a, take a breath of that chocolate and I want you to sort of get in touch with what does that chocolate smell like? And if you can pick up whether it's got, you know, if you're having white chocolate, that's gonna smell a little bit different from maybe uh, you know, dark chocolate and sort of smell what that chocolate's like and then go ahead and take a little bite of that chocolate. And just let it melt and sort of what that chocolate feels like um, and sort of notice the texture. Is it smooth? Is there something to chew or is there some, something to sort of bite on if you have any nuts in that chocolate? And go ahead and take a second bite. Enjoy that chocolate as it coats your mouth inside, as you're eating that chocolate, and go ahead and, and, and eat the rest of the chocolate. Yeah, by slowing down and by really noticing all the different senses with the chocolate, it feels like a more like full experience of really getting the smell of it, getting a sight of it. it. It makes the taste even feel more more intense. So, so Jenna, it, it, like, is it different? Like, if you were to just eat that chocolate, just like without this mindfulness exercise, how do you think that would be different? you yeah I don't it, it definitely is a different experience and I know often again with like kind of just being in a rush I'm like oh I want some chocolate I'll just like have some dove chocolate and not really think about it but slowing it down and really experiencing the chocolate oh man it's definitely different and and feels more more filling yeah I'm, I'm sort of trying not to salivate here so once <laughs> I'm done and I'm going to go eat my chocolate chips as well. Um, but thank you for doing it uh, with me. And the whole idea of this is uh, that, you know, you can do this even at, like, when you're eating a, eating a meal. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do this with broccoli. You could do this with, mm -hmm. or just, you know, when you're having lunch or dinner, we're usually watching off, you know, looking at our phones. We're, again, multitasking. So, this sort of is an activity to invite us to be more mindful, more fully present with the food that we're using to nurture our bodies or the chocolate that we're eating or even with, I think I'm going to try this with tiramisu, Jenna. I haven't done that yet. Ooh, that's a, there's a lot of different textures in there, I feel like. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good I one. think that's going, to be, that's going to be on my self-care plan for this week. Mm -hmm. Nice, I like yeah. it. Yeah, thank you, Jenna, for doing that with me. Thanks for going through that. Sure. And so those are kind of the five, um, definitely not an exhaustive list or an exclusive list. Um, so here are just some other helpful tools and references for continuing your self-care mindful journey. Um, a couple apps, uh, phone apps that I personally love and I think are really helpful um, are the Mindfulness Coach app and the COVID Coach app. Um, and so both of those are free, which are my favorite prices. Um, and they were developed by the VA for, or the Mindfulness Coach app was developed by the VA 
for veterans combating PTSD. And so it has a lot of really great mindfulness guided exercises, um, some kind of just a basic mindfulness, others mindful eating, mindful walking, dealing with uncomfortable emotions. And so it's a great resource as well as a COVID coach app, which was developed specifically for COVID um, and helping to manage stress um, in these current times. And I think it does a really great job of having different, you can track your, your symptoms of any anxiety or depression, and then has a lot of different um, exercises and techniques for managing stress. Um, so those are some really helpful, um, helpful tools, I think. And again, recognizing those different dimensions of wellness. Calm.com has a lot of great free stuff. Um, different books. And if you do a Google search on mindfulness, breathing meditations, a lot comes up. So figuring out what works for you, and this can just be a helpful place to start looking for that. Um, and then if, as you're listening to this and you're like, man, it'd be really nice to talk to somebody about what I'm going through. We are continuing with our services. Um, and so at the time of this recording is the, is July 23rd. Um, here an update on our summer services. If you're listening to this and it is already in the fall, um, just call our center. Our number is plastered all over this slide, 828-262-3180 to get an update on what our services are. But in general, we are continuing to do phone consultations. Um, you can schedule an initial consultation um, just by calling our, calling our number. We're providing telemental health services. So you can talk to one of our counselors um, through telemental health for therapy services. We do have emergency services as well. Um, if you're in the Boone area, um, there's a number of resources. And if you're outside the Boone area, there are also a number of resources you can check out, um, as well as a number of our quick access workshops and feeling good workshop series um, are, uh, we offer them live. And if you go to our YouTube page, likely where you found this recording, you'll find a lot more of our other recordings on quick access workshops and feeling good workshops. Um, and we're offering a uh, let's teletalk via Zoom. So if you're not quite sure if you, um, want to do therapy or you have questions about it or there's just a specific issue that you want some feedback on, um, you can check out our website on how to access uh, Teletalk via Zoom. And then on our website too, we also have an, uh, even more self-help resources regarding all these different topics. So if you're looking for extra support or extra resources, we've got something for you. Um, just contact us or check out our website, counseling.appstate.edu, um, and figure out what, what services are going to work best for you. Thanks, Jenna, for sharing all that information. Um, and so uh, we want to thank you for sharing our time, uh, sharing your time with us. And we want to leave you with a quote, which we love, which is, uh, Self-compassion is simply giving the same kindness to ourselves that we would give to others. So on that note, we hope that you will uh, practice some self-care. Uh, and it also has uh, my email on there if you have any questions um, or just any comments, please feel free to write there. Uh, we also have a link on our chat for uh, an evaluation. Uh, so if you could uh, just go to that link and then fill out an evaluation. That would be great. Uh, and if you need uh, that and you can't access it, feel free to write to the email uh, provided and we will be happy to get that to you. So thank you, Jenna. Anything else that you would like to add? No, thank you all for, uh, for listening to this recording and we hope it's been helpful. And again, if you have any questions, comments, um, you can either email Gayatri or give us a call at the center. Um, but thank you again and have a wonderful rest of your day.